up, y'all? It's Amethyst. It's Marv. Samuel. And we've got the incredible George Locke, the actor, writer, director, <laughs> and musician from Black Lightning and Little. Hey. Yeah, that's where y'all know him from. And we're going to be talking to him about the coming, the coming up, the coming to of mm. George Locke. So, um, when would you like to start? We're going to give it to you. Um, I don't I guess the journey. Is mm. it? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I don't know how far we should go back, but... Um, just hit us with like a just a drop in Florida and yeah. then you just come hey. like a transition. So I originally lived in Florida. I'm from Plant City, Florida, this small hey. little country town. Yeah. So, uh, 813. 813 by 813. Okay. Um grew up in a peach as a peach as a peacher son, you know what I mean? Lived in a okay. sheltered life or whatever. But yeah. I, I did music first. And music was my, my number one passion and I signed a deal and it just went bad. Mm. Simultaneously I started working uh with Jermaine Dupree on his Global Fourteen um chapter nice. and I, I wrote and recorded a theme song and my life kind of started changing because a lot of people started looking at me mm. but I couldn't put music out because I was signed to this label okay. and so I ended up going back home to Florida well I was living in Florida but I was living in Jacksonville Florida okay. and I went back home and I started my own entertainment company signed my own artists and put them out but there was a moment where I had to decide either I'm going to be their Diddy right yeah. manage them and make them stars or I'm going to pause and go after my dreams and yeah. so I just felt that moment, something kept telling me to go to Atlanta, move to Atlanta. And it didn't make sense because I ain't had no money. <laughs> I was like, who, who lived there? And oh um, I didn't know anybody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but anyway, I was watching uh, this video by Kelly Price. And she, in this quote, I'm paraphrasing because I'm going to get it wrong. But it, she basically was saying that um, even a fisherman with all the right equipment uh, won't catch a fish if, it sta if he stands in the woods. Mm. So no matter how quick you are, you will never catch the fish if you never find the water. And so for me, Florida was the woods. There was not a lot of opportunity for me. And I was like, if I could just get to the water, I knew I'll catch my fish. And so I just left Florida. You know mm. what I mean? My little hoop did. Mm. And with $250, and I said, in two years, 24 months, which is crazy. But I was like, I'm going to give myself two years. And then here I am, two years later. Wow. Yeah. So that's that was the beginning of my journey. Okay, and um, tell us a little bit about like that early foray and like what you was willing to do, like uh, just to just to work in Georgia. So I, I kind of dated Atlanta first, you know what right. I mean. <laughs> I, so for the first year, I didn't live here, but I was uh, traveling back and forth. I had got into doing background work, and um, I just wanted to learn the set experience. Right. And so because I didn't know anybody really in Atlanta, I would drive up seven hours to do background work. Get my hoop and drive back uh, seven Ooh. hours. So Ooh. I was doing yeah, fourteen trip, hour, fourteen me. hour trips. Yeah, for a fourteen hour day. Yeah, uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And because I was just so hungry for it, and I think at those times it was, I didn't realize it, but spiritually I felt like I was planting seeds. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I was just learning so much. But even it was just kind of crazy because even when I would do those crazy things, people look at me crazy. Like, Why are you doing this? You know what I mean? But I would get on set, and then just like that, our director would be like, "Hey, you come here." Hey, we like your look. You come here, and then I just kept getting these featured parts in movies, and you know, I, it was divine. But I was willing to do that. You know what I mean? Mm. And You're willing and to do the work if you put in the work. Mm. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. And then you talk about like how. Oh, you know what? You talk about some of the tough times, like some yeah, of the, the hardships, yeah, no, the, the hardships, hardship, like the real hardship. Like that was a hardship. But I'm talking about like. You know, like how tough did it really? Get? And we said, how was it? As if it ain't still hard. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but like, it's definitely hard. a lot better. People uh, know no. you now. You've done yeah, some things, I, but um, before all that, yeah, I, I had my I had my moments where I was living in my car. You know what I mean? I yeah, nobody knew. I would you know sneak into Walmart. And other places, take my little back, bird bath and stuff. And you never know, because I would go in front of people and I would smile. And I thought I was being fake, but I, you just got to make it happen. Mm -hmm. But it's one of the best things that ever happened to me, because I realized then, like, you don't really need the people or things you think you need to survive. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But obviously, yeah, there were times where, where like, the money was low. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And so, mm -hmm. though, it's not, okay, today, I might not eat. Mm. Today, I might not do this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or And it was the funny things, because most people who, like, are well off, they don't have the connections. But I was the one with the connections and wasn't well off. So it was like, oh, wow, I got an audition today and I don't got gas to get to my audition. Or I got invited to this red carpet event. And again, I don't know how, you know what I mean? Yeah, what so I'm aware to the red carpet yeah. event. You know, so I, got, I got $8 I'm on the red carpet. Right. And, like, Yo. and you're smiling. And so, and, but that has been the life. And so I learned, or this journey, the tough times taught me that yeah. fame and finances are not the same. No. Mm. They both come in two different terms. So separate, you know, and <laughs> yeah. it seems like they go together, but they don't, right? But people so. think that. And so that's the conflict is when they see you like, oh, I know you are, but they see you on the bus. 
Well, at least you like, oh, <laughs> you just got out of your 90s car. That's nice. How does your family, like, when you go back home, like, how does your family, like, adjust to, like, seeing you in movies and everything? Don't give a fool. No, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's so interesting, but because I'm from a small town, like, I'm the first to do a lot of stuff. So I'm the mm. first to, to break into TV, first one to be in a film, you know mm. what I mean? Special yeah. Littles International. It, it feels empowering. Like, there's nobody mm-hmm. that come from Plant City, Florida to do this. So, I'm honored. But my family, I don't... It's so funny. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't spend a lot of time with my family. I don't. And so, mm-hmm. that has been this this journey, too, because a lot of people don't know, like, I was adopted at birth. And oh. so, last year, I discovered who my biological mom was. And so, I kind of never really had a close bond with my siblings because I always felt like there was this... These are the real kids and these are the adopted kids. This and so, us. Mm-hmm. I've never opened up a Bible, but I feel like, it, you know, that's... I've been trying to find myself into this and trying to fit. And so even now, I'm and you say family, I'm trying to understand the dynamic of what a family really is. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know. So I, the kid in me still used to want the moments where like I would have a parent out. I'm like, that's my son. Yeah. But mm-hmm. being a preacher's kid and my parents are kind of older, they, they always had their own thing. And my parents love me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like even with little, I tell people like I had no family there. So the biggest you know, thinking my life, red carpet in this international movie, and I was in the trailer, it blew my mind, and then here I am with only selected friends that support me. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I say to say this is, like, accept support as it comes. I think a lot of times we want support from certain people, mm-hmm. but it was until I said, I'm just going to embrace the support that I get. Because mm-hmm. it, it ain't going to always be from your family. It ain't going to always be mm-hmm. from the people you expect it from. So mm-hmm. I learned at that time in family that, like, people are people who love you genuinely and want to see you win, mm-hmm. and... And we'll give you the sharp their back. Like, that is fam- family. And because mm-hmm. I didn't even know where I came from, uh, people used to say, blood is thick in water, right? And I didn't know where my blood came from. So mm-hmm. loyalty was the biggest thing of family to me. Like, I was like, if you're loyal to me, mm-hmm. I, I acknowledge that as family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I want to I want to find out from you, George. Uh, basically, you can tell us, like, very briefly, your journey to where you are now. Like, where you've come from and to what's next. Um... When journey, what you mean like, like you, what you've come to expect and who you are and acceptance and where you're at? Okay, and like basically overall to what's next for you? What's next for me? I think at 31, I'm becoming. You know what I mean? I'm still embracing this chapter of my life. Um, I'm embracing how great I really am. So mm-hmm. talented. You don't believe it? Who, who's <laughs> supposed to believe yeah. it? It starts, yeah. off with, it starts off with you first. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I went through this hurt phase of so neglecting music because that was a bad situation. I'm I'm finding love in music again, so I wanna yeah. I'm creating music now. Yeah. I'm I'm getting into writing. I'm directing my own stuff. I'm mm. producing my own stuff nice. and and working with a lot of uh, creatives in Atlanta and just creating opportunities. And I think God for the platform that I have, it's only gonna grow. But I want I feel like there's other people like me oh. who are just so talented and just need people to see them. You know yes, what I mean? And yes. and be giving that shot. So I'm like, why am I waiting for this opportunity? I can create an opportunity from whatever little platform that I have now. And, and so, yeah, that's where I am. And that's why I see coming next is just building my own empire. You know what mm, I mean? Yeah. And, 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 you know, turn it up. <laughs> I know um, that little Packer. That, yeah. You know what I mean? I see you on the red carpet next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't say what so. so would you say that, like, your journey from being in Florida to being in an international movie. I know everybody has their own like path, but would you say it was a conventional path or did you like see what other people did? It's like, okay, I'm gonna do it like this or just like improv. Like I'm just gonna go for it and what happened? No, I, and I'm the poster kid for, for stepping out on faith and, 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 and jumping and hoping that this parachute opens. <laughs> I, there was no, and the thing about it is, and we may feel this way, there's certain things that we'll be the first to ever do. And so mm-hmm. when you're the pioneer, you don't, there is no go-to book. Mm-hmm. You're the one who leads the way for the people behind you. And so I understood, even at a younger age, like there were things I were going to achieve and be the first to do it. So my journey was more pioneerish. There was nobody to really watch. And the go-to, I had to learn as I went. And now I look back, I'm like, oh, man, I realized this is the necessary steps. So now, knowing the wisdom that I know now, I don't think I would have did background work as long as I did. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have just probably did those necessary steps, like get headshots, take acting classes, get a reel. You know what I mean? Do all, because I now know the necessary steps. So, But my journey wasn't, it was no, it was just, I just went as long as I, I learned. Learned as you were, but you did the yeah. best at that moment that, that you could do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and it led me, yeah. you know, listening to that inner voice, I think that's important. Because that, and not to be too spiritual, but I feel like there's a certain, and I ain't trying to be too religious, but... You can like, be too okay, religious you, here, look, right? Whatever you so, want, you know, speak your truth. Like, God has created all of us in a certain 
for a certain journey, right? Yeah. And it's so important to be yourself because growing up and not finding my identity in my family and I was being an odd one, that was the very thing that propelled me when I moved to Atlanta. I was so different, but that made me stand out. And so I said that to say this is you have to be true to yourself. You have to be, you have to listen to that voice that says go because each of us have a certain amount of blessings attached to who we are, right? Mm -hmm. But it yields me nothing to pretend to be him. Because if I pretend mm -hmm. to be him, I'm going to miss everything that's for me. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I can't, you know, morph into being somebody else. If you, I was going to say, if you can't, can't be a Kardashian. But mm -hmm. you should be who you are. And <laughs> right. I'm, right. You they know are I mean? their own thing. Yeah, they are. They are. Saying, I love the Kardashians. But I'm saying yeah. it's important. But they already did that. You can be, <laughs> right. You can be inspired by people, but you still have to walk into your journey, your specific yes. journey. Oh, so. yes. Yeah. Man, it was beautiful. Yes. And uh, any any just last word? Those are last words. Yeah. But anything else you want to tell so people, people out there to people that are coming up? They don't know up from down. You know, they don't know what they want to do, who they want to be. Like, do you have advice for even or the young George? Wait, before you knew what you yeah, were before for the music. Young George. The young George. Before um, you even knew that you, or is it like you was a young kid when that you knew you wanted to music? My old advice would be stay away well, from cookies and chips. It ain't gonna help you out. <laughs> no, okay, seriously. Um, that's I, comfort food. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. I feel like that's the thing is you'll be okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's the thing is to have experienced so much at a young age and you don't know what tomorrow brings. I just it, you, you will get through it. You know what I mean? Like you, you'll be okay. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was beautiful. You will be okay. Yeah. And thank you for no, coming. Thanks, yeah, man. Thanks for yeah, yeah, having me. Oh no, no, <laughs> no yeah. And, and all I gotta say at the end of this is ah. <laughs>